Four acts in this section. Are you ready? Yeah! yeah. His name is Nathan Virica. Everybody, on the count of three, start clapping your hands, stop your feet, go absolutely wild and welcome to the stage. One, two, three, go! Hello. 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 So, my name's Nathan Virica, and as you can probably tell from the way I'm dressed, I am a failed musician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't know if anyone in here tonight, uh, if you have uh, dreams of your own. I mean, we're here on a Sunday night in Birkenhead, so I'm guessing not. <laughs> But if you do, then please, for God's sake, try and endeavour to make a success of it. Otherwise, well, this could be you in a few years' time. <laughs> Desperately seeking the approval of strangers. Um, but when I was like 20, 21, I had pretty massive dreams of music superstardom. But in the end, the closest I ever got to emulating the likes of Bono or Gary Barlow. It's when I was late paying my council tax once. <laughs> well, on the entertainment front, we've got the masked dancer back on TV. Yay. Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> so I've been told anyway, uh, that lady can probably tell you a lot more about it than I can. Um, but I've, I've kind of caught clips of that and the mass Singer in the past, just mainly for the purposes of material. <laughs> and whenever I've seen it, it's always been Joel Domic shilling it with the same line. He goes, the greatest kept secret in television history. Yeah, I think Jimmy Savile's victims were probably back to this one. <laughs> Jimmy Savile, man. One of the worst things ever to come out of Leeds. Arguably second only to the Kaiser Chiefs. <laughs> uh, we had the Brit Awards earlier this year. Um, and I haven't watched that for a few years now, if I'm honest. But um, my favourite memory of it uh, in recent times uh, was when Madonna fell flat on her ass a few years ago. And I say that as a fan and connoisseur of watching videos of old women falling down flights of stairs. <laughs> But um, she tripped over that massive cloak she was wearing, didn't she? And to this day, I still don't think she should have worn that to perform. I think she should have stuck to using that for its original purpose. Concealing the children she's stolen from Malawi so she can smuggle them through airport customs. <laughs> uh, so moving on from music. Uh, I'm a... <laughs> yeah, I'm not bitter about the industry at all. But... <laughs> Shoot me up and spat me out. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a freelance writer by trade these days, and I've always sort of had a fairly keen interest in history. So I often get fascinated by things like the derivations of company names. Uh, for instance, you know Hermes, right? The delivery company. Well, it turns out that's actually taken from ancient Greek mythology, and the company is named after Hermes the Greek god of indiscriminately lobbing parcels into random people's hedges. <laughs> um, and in terms of my home life, uh, the big thing as of late is um, I've actually discovered that scented toilet paper is a thing. Uh, this is what happens when your mum decides she's going to come and stay with you for a few weeks. Stuff like this just turns up unsolicited in your house and you sort of have to make the best of it. Uh, but to come, cut a long story short, I may be single. Very single. <laughs> I may be the wrong side of 30. And I may be skin. But at least I now have a lovely lemony felon that I can be proud of. <laughs> Right, uh, I'm going to test you all now with a couple of dark ones and then we'll decide how we proceed with the rest of this set. <laughs> um, I got a leaflet through the door the other day from my local takeaway 
Uh, I've not tried it yet, but I've read some good reviews and sort of heard some good things. Uh, it's called Al Capone's Pizza. <laughs> and it got me wondering, how come it's okay to name a business like that after some infamous criminals, but not others? Darling, do you fancy Ian Brady's fish and chips tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but we had Levi Belfield's burgers last weekend, don't you remember? <laughs> Fine, Peter Tobin, Sandoria, this one. <laughs> Come to think of it, um, the local chippy where I used to live in Essex for 10 years was called Churchill's. <laughs> so it stands to reason but somewhere in Munich. There's an equivalent, <laughs> equivalent bratwurst and potato takeaway <laughs> called Hitler. <laughs> right, now this one. Um, actually, this one. Um, I think there's an important message in it somewhere because it's all about charity and philanthropy, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, a friend of mine came over for dinner the other day and uh, we were just sat eating our dinner in front of the telly uh, when one of those charity appeal adverts came on and it was the usual sort of horrendous thing, you know, starving kids with no clothes on, flies buzzing around their faces, drinking dirty water, that sort of thing. And my friend turns to me and he goes, do you know, I really hate how they keep showing these adverts when people are having their tea. It's you. <laughs> and I kind of thought about it for a second, and I thought, do you know, they, they probably do that deliberately, don't they? And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, the contrast, the look at how well-fed you are, and look at how these poor kids are suffering. And I, for one, am really glad that they choose to show these adverts when people are having their tea because it's far easier for me to hide my erection when I've got a dinner tray perched on my lap. <laughs> I told you to brace yourselves, didn't I? <laughs> right, we have reached a crossroads in, in my set. Um, how do we all feel about uh, the Queen's death? Um, I guess what I'm really asking here is, uh, are there any uh, ardent royalists in the audience? Good, I just thought I'd check before I proceed to this next bit. Uh, but in all seriousness, I would like to take this opportunity to um, extend my sincerest condolences to anyone who tuned in to BBC One last Thursday expecting to see Bargain Hunt. <laughs> Of course, with um, had the uh, massive queue, uh, people from well, people of all ages, all genders, all from all over the world queuing up for up to 24 hours in London for a chance to see the Queen's coffin. And I think the last time that that many young girls felt obliged to queue up to see something cold and stiff. <laughs> was outside Prince Andrew's bedroom at Jeffrey Epstein's house. Um, I mean, I don't have anything against the Queen personally. I think she was probably a fairly passable human being, but nevertheless, I'm not really a fan of the institution of the monarchy. I uh, don't think it's got any place in the 21st century. And it kind of annoys me when you tell people that, and their response is always the same if they're a fan. It's always along the lines of, oh, but think about all the money they bring in from tourism. And you think, hey, do they really? How much of that do you see in your bank account? And B, do you imagine that prior to the French Revolution, the following conversation ever took place anywhere in France? Oh, jean -Pierre. This is très malheureusement. 
The king and his madame, they rule so cruelly and callously, and they live in such luxury. We must storm the Bastille, overthrow them, and remove their debts. Vive la France! No, Emmanuel. If we do this, then think of the incredibly adverse effects on the tourism industry. <laughs> Without King Louis XVI and his madame, Marie Antoinette, how will we sell crappy tea towels and commemorative coffee cups to American visitors? Yeah, I'm breaking into character comedy. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> those are the first two, Jean-Pierre and Emmanuel, the French peasants who speak in broken English for some reason. <laughs> It's also, uh, I don't know how many of you are on Twitter, I'm on there quite often, it's also brought out, and the Jubilee did as well, some of the absolute worst people on it, all the right-wing Twitter accounts, uh, and you, if you're on there you'll know the kind of thing, you know, several union jacks in their username, banging on about Britishness, despite apparently not being able to spell a single word of English correctly, <laughs> seven followers, even if you were teak, you get the idea. <laughs> And I looked up, there was this one particular guy, and I looked on his biography, and in it he's proudly boasting that he used to be Amy Winehouse's bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, you fucking nailed that job, didn't you, pal? <laughs> What's your next gig? Robin Williams' is psychotherapist. <laughs> um, anyway, the Tories. <laughs> um, got uh, Liz Truss as the new Prime Minister, yeah. and I think we can, most of us can agree that she's going to be a pretty awful Prime Minister. <laughs> but on the plus side, I don't think it will be too difficult to assassinate her. <laughs> because we've got, if you think about it, with most world so leaders... Sorry? So we start. Okay, uh, we may or may not get on to that, <laughs> but if you, if you think about it, uh, with most world leaders you need some sort of rifle and a fairly lax uh, security service, but in order to get rid of Liz Truss, all we're going to need is a block of cheese and a giant mousetrap. <laughs> Uh, she's replacing Boris Johnson, and it was just before the slew of resignations the week before. It was uh, broken by Private Eye, which was uh, the scandal which, for me, summed up Boris Johnson absolutely perfectly. Uh, basically, back in 2018, don't know how many of you heard this, uh, Carrie Simmons, as she was then, was caught giving oral sex to Boris Johnson in his Westminster office while he was still married to his ex-wife, who was battling cancer at the time. And when I heard this, I, I kind of had a newfound respect for Carrie. Because I imagine that giving Boris Johnson a blowjob must be a bit like eating a fruit yogurt that's been stuck at the back of the fridge for six years. Yeah. When you think about that, just remember, I put that idea in your head. I regret nothing. <laughs> uh, we've got the Formula One season still ongoing. Uh, Lewis Hamilton not doing well this year. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, a man who decided at a young age that he wanted to drive a Formula One car for a living. And um, later turned vegan in an effort to combat climate change. <laughs> <laughs> The environmental equivalent of giving your son a rape alarm after you've already sent him off to a Catholic boarding school. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to finish on, uh, on a bit of a personal story, which is mostly true. Some of it has been embellished for comedic effect. Um, but um, it wasn't so long ago that I was actually going through a, a pretty shitty time and I, um, I actually spent some time in hospital. And uh, if I could sum up the experience for you, there was one afternoon where I sort of woke from a nap and going on smell alone, I assumed that one of the other patients on the ward had just used the commode. 
uh, sort of woke up a little bit more and started to realise that it was actually dinner time and what I could smell was the fucking hospital food. <laughs> I mean, during a cost of living crisis, being in hospital is the one time when you're going to be offered a free hot meal and it will elicit the response, I'm good, thanks. I've got some monster munch. <laughs> But um, I think the biggest thing to happen while I was in there was, um, it was actually, I think, on the second day, um, a guy on my ward actually died. And um, I don't, he, was a, he was a fairly old and confused man, and I never caught his name, but yeah, I basically saw the whole thing unfold while well, I watched a man die. Uh, and a couple of hours after that, um, I accidentally walked on on this other old guy having a shit because it um, it obviously not locked the door properly and uh, this forced me to um, I mean I saw yeah I was in there for like two seconds and then I backed out and was forced to use the other toilet down the corridor and while I was in there I really started to think about the day I just have had it was just really on my mind you know not just the shitting man I've just seen but also the guy I essentially watched die earlier and have you any idea how difficult it is to have a wank when you've got a cannula sticking out of your hand. <laughs> I think what I'm trying to say, in a sort of roundabout way, is save our NHS. <laughs> Thank you both, and have a wonderful good night. That is our last break we're coming to, but give it up for the actual you've seen that section. You saw Kay Nicholson. Yeah. You saw Nathan Miracle. Yeah. We're going to have a quick break. We'll be back with your headline act. We'll see you in 10.